Okay, I'm going to show in this video how to um, use my digital articulator to align some edentulous models to it and then how to utilize some of the tooth setting aids that I find really useful for this. So uh, when you purchase this articulator, it's going to come with all the individual files, which you can print, of course, but then there's a master file, which is actually a mesh mixer project, and it has everything in there. Um, and everything, it, what's really important about this is it's, it's all set up at dead zero. Um, so if you think about a, a frame of 3D space, right? Well, there's a true north, right? There's a true south. Well, this articulator is aligned to that. And what that does is that gives you a lot of neat uh, uh, tool functionality. For example, let's say these planes that I'm trying to align to aren't exactly how I want them. Well, it's really easy for me to just take these and I can move it up and down and never get out of alignment with the articulator. It's all still entirely within that same frame. Okay, so that's important to know because when I bring in my models, so let's grab these edentulous models. Okay, you can see here I've brought in these models and they are aligned to an entirely different uh, world framework, right? So that's always the case. Different scanners are going to have different uh, output positions. And so in order to use these tools to their maximum ability, what I want to do is I want to actually bring my models to the articulator. And it doesn't matter if it's one model or 20 uh, or different meshes or CT scans, whatever, but you'll get the most use out of this if you bring your models to the articulator. So to do that, I've pulled these both in. They're oriented to one another. I need to control select both of them and do this simultaneously because otherwise you know if you just pull one model over and get it aligned you know you're not going to be able to bring all the others and keep it uh, you know the same uh, alignment that you originally had relative to one another so what I'm doing is I'm just pulling these guys down into a rough ballpark and now I always start by looking from the top and I want to try to get you know any kind of twist out of this I want to make sure that I'm going right through the middle of the incisive papilla and then right out the back of the uh, the palatal suture so I can twist these just a hair alright that looks good and then looking from the front I want to make sure that I don't have any kind of a cant now you could align it to the hip plane and that's one of the planes that's available in this. Um, we can also reference the retromolar pads here. So actually that's looking pretty good. That's about two thirds of the way up the retromolar pad. And then we can look from a lateral view. Now again, the hip plane is a useful determinant for this. Um, you, can, you can do whatever you want. You know, the hip plane here Personally, I think if I had followed the hip plane here, I would end up with more of a, a flat smile than I'm really after. And so I'm going to just tilt that down a little bit. Okay, so I've got my horizontal going two thirds of the way up the retromolar pad right there. I've got my uh, cast where there's they're tilted the amount that I want. and I've got them al aligned along the midline. So this is starting to look pretty good. Now, if you wanted to, you've also got this, uh, this tool here for a uh, digital papilla meter. Okay, so that is this tool right here that you can see. So a couple things to point out. This is placed at the dead zero point on all of these facial planes. And there's also a Kois transfer plate that is oriented to this. If you've used this, you know that you put your incisors right against this. You align the Kois uh, facial analyzer to the midline of the face and everything. And that generally is going to put the uh, incisal edge in the right position relative to the joint. Okay, so I can use that, but one of the things as I designed this, I noticed that Kois has his, his plate set up where it's basically seven millimeters uh, anterior 
to what most papillas are. All right, and that makes sense because the average incisive papilla uh, is is seven millimeters up and seven millimeters back from the incisal edge. So all that to say, I don't even need to have that plate on. Um, if you look here, since the average is seven, you'll see on this digital papilla meter that seven millimeters forward is marked in a different color, as is seven millimeters above. So what I can do with that is once again moving both models together. I've already got alignment correct. Now I'm just trying to figure out how far forward am I going to bring these models. Okay, so what I like to do is look and it, you can even, if you've got an open model, you can look from above here. And I want to put this uh, cylinder right in the middle of the incisive papilla. Okay, maybe a hair more right there. Okay, so now that my models are all oriented, this is going to make for a very useful uh, tooth setting aid. Okay, so if you if you were pure guessing and you didn't know where you wanted to put an incisal edge, a darn good guess would be to come down and put it right here. Okay, so. Right now, I've got these models oriented where they're at about eight and a half, okay? Because if I count up from here, they're seven, eight, eight and a half to the papilla. Um, and, and again, that's going to vary from patient to patient. Average is seven. That means there's a bell curve. There's people outside of that. Um, I'm going to go with the position where I had the retromolar pads. Uh, to me, that makes more sense to do. And so now I've got that set. Uh, another useful tool that you've got is the waxing plate with a built-in sphere of Monson. All right, so once again, all of this stuff is oriented to one another already in a universal frame. And that's why you want to pull your models to it as opposed to pull the articulator bases to your models, at least if you're going to do digital design. Okay. So we'll be able to utilize this when we are uh, doing our tooth setting. Okay, so basically with that done, oh, let me show one other thing here real quick before I, uh, before I jump out of this. Um, let's suppose that you wanted to open the bite. Okay, so you look at this and you know the doctor, maybe they did a mush bite and it's clearly overclosed and you know that you need to uh, open them up really easy to do that. I can just select the upper member here and now instead of using this rotation widget that that doesn't help us right that's gonna get it all out of whack so I'm gonna cancel that. Rather there is a cylinder that is oriented right through the middle of these ball joints and it has a built-in hinge on it okay so you just change your pivot point and now look you can open or close that exactly along the hinge axis of this articulator to whatever degree you want. Okay, so I just want to show that real quick. Uh, we don't need to do that in this case, but uh, I just wanted to make that clear. So what I'm going to do, and I'll time lapse this so you don't have to sit around and watch it, but I'm going to export all of these files uh, that are useful. Oh, I, I do have to show you one other thing. Okay, this is a golden proportions ruler. So, okay, there we go. So you have a golden proportions ruler in here. Okay. So if you know anything about the golden proportion stuff, you know, this is straight off of, of Dawson's uh, website here. You can see the average uh, width based on golden proportions, 1.6. Let's say if you use the lateral as your one, the central is going to be 1.6 times that. The visible portion of the canine, and this is a little sketchy depending on who you read, but the visible portion of the canine is 0.6 of the lateral. I find it more useful to use these golden proportions. Um, they are set up on this exact ratio, but that's where I like to put the tip of the cusp on the canine. Okay, so that's going to help us in setting our teeth. All right, so back to this, we have these golden proportions. All right, the average width of a maxillary central incisor is nine millimeters wide. That's exactly what this ruler is set to. So if you put your midline right here 
and the distal of your central incisor came to right here, that would be a nine millimeter wide central. Now again, there's a bell curve in everything. So let's say you've got a little tiny patient and you know that they're gonna have narrower teeth than that or vice versa, a huge patient. Uh, here's again where it's really important that all of this is aligned on the universal uh, world frame of this CAD program is I can just simply hit transform and if I wanted a smaller golden proportion do you see how that maintains the proportions? It stretches like an accordion. You know, if I wanted a 10 millimeter central, maybe I'm right there. If I wanted a uh, eight millimeter wide central, maybe I'm right there. But you have that versatility that you can alter that uh, however you need to. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export my facial planes, my golden proportion ruler, even this papillometer and my newly oriented models because now those are all oriented at, and I'm gonna also export this uh, sphere of Monson thing. Um, now you, you will have all of these files digitally so if you, you don't have to export you know each of these things individually really just your models uh, because you've already got all that stuff in the folder for this articulator. So I'm gonna export the maxillary model and now the lower uh, master model. And now what we're gonna do is just bring all of those files into ExoCAD together. Remember, they're oriented to one another, so you can just bring them all in simultaneously. Okay, so here we are in ExoCAD. Um, I'll just show you how I'm designating this. I'll click on one of these teeth. We're just calling this, if it's for a digital denture, I'm gonna call it a Pontic Wax Up. Um, I don't generally want to bring in any pre-op scans unless I have bite rims that I'm referencing. Uh, but you want to say that you do want to digitally design the wax up. You don't have a wax up that you're scanning in this case. Um, I don't need any virtual extractions here and I do want to design a virtual gingiva. So with that, let's go ahead and launch. Okay, so first it wants the upper model, which we've aligned. Now it wants the lower model, which we aligned. Okay, and we're going to have to jump through a few initial stages here, setting up the case. So indicate the occlusal. Now it's going to want you to indicate your path of draw. So one thing that I would suggest you do is allow the maximum undercut. I wish ExoCAD allowed a greater amount of undercut, but they don't. And so we just set it to half a millimeter. And then we're going to set the insertion direction from this view where we can see everything without a lot of undercut. So I'll click next. Okay, so with that done, we uh, need to drop in our chain of teeth. And so I try to, to get this thing symmetric, I try to click the exact same spot on either side of the model. So position of 1-7, and then I'm going to click the exact same spot for the position of 2-7. Okay, and this is where you would want to indicate what library of teeth you're using. I'm going to choose the uh, HD teeth, I like those. All right, so there is our upper teeth dropped in. Click Next. So now we've got to do the exact same stuff for the lower. All right, so I need to indicate a path of draw. That's probably as good as I'm going to get it. I'll probably lose some undercut right here. Uh, ExoCAD, please fix that without making me buy your denture module. Allow all the undercuts, and now let's uh, set the insertion direction from this view, and we'll click Next. Okay, now I've got to drop teeth onto the bottom, and so I need to turn on my lower jaw scan, and I want to turn these upper teeth off because they're going to be in my way. And I want to choose HD teeth. And again, I want to click on the same general area right where I would want the distal of my second molar. So probably right there and right there. Obviously those are way too big, but that's okay. We'll, we'll roll with that for the moment. I would like to slide this up a little bit. I find the more 
symmetric you get them at this stage in the game, the easier your setup is going to go. So I'm going to scoot that up a little bit more. Okay, that's good enough. We'll click next. Okay, so now we could go ahead and start, uh, you know, doing our tooth alignment and everything. But before I do that, I actually want to bring in those those uh, design files. Okay, so go to expert, go to tools, and then we're going to add and remove some meshes. Okay, so I'm going to call these generic visualization meshes. We'll load them, and I want to bring in the papillometer, my facial planes, and this sphere of Monson. Um, oh, and I forgot one. Uh, so these are, if you pulled your models to the articulator, then yes, these meshes are stored relative to the scan data. Uh, I do want to keep them individual. And I want to bring in one other, which is the golden proportions uh, ruler for a nine millimeter wide central. All right, so we've got all of our design aids in here. And I know ExoCAD has some of this stuff, but um, I currently don't have their Smile Design software, and so I just made them. And maybe they're better, maybe they're worse. I don't know because I haven't used theirs, but it is what it is. Okay, so now we could go ahead and start aligning our teeth. So let's go back now to the wizard. And I'm going to use chain mode. And what I'm going to do is just hide the lower teeth for now because I don't really care about them at the moment. You know, your, your maxilla drives the case. So aesthetics are what is going to matter the most uh, as far as the patient happiness with the case. And so that's what I'm going to focus on first. Now, because I did a good job of dropping points on, you see that this is almost aligned perfectly, but it's just a hair off. So what I'm going to do is just pull the whole chain over here, and I'm going to go ahead and set my incisal edge. And I want to set to this Spear of Monson. So I've, I've pulled it down until I can just see uh, the same amount of central poking through, and then I'm going to get it dead center. Okay, so now we're good there. We're already pretty close to a 9mm central incisor. Uh, and you know, maybe I would just go with this, but I am looking overall and the scale of this is too big. I mean, no one's got a second molar back here where a third molar is. And so I'm gonna scale everything down. Um, I'll do that by just probably, how do I wanna do that? So what I'll probably have to do is just lock each central and do this, uh, you know, on either side, okay. Now it's doing it. Do you see how now it's fitting right to that nine millimeter width? And now I'm gonna lock this one and I'll pull the other one over. Now we're talking. Okay. And now I'm looking here at the golden proportion ruler. Again, the canine line, really I, the way I utilize that is I like it to align right to the incisal edge, which is typically the part you see of the teeth. Again, it's it's a little fuzzy, depending on who I read, uh, where to, to reference that. But the smiles I've designed look best when I have that going right to the tips of the canine. And I'm already aligned there. Now, you'll notice that in doing so, my lateral is uh, larger than the golden proportion. I don't really worry about that. To me, these look like nice laterals. It gives it some character. So I'm not going to change that. Okay. Now, where do I want my incisal edge? Again, I want it to just be showing through on that sphere of Monson. So I need to bring my whole chain back again to where we had already established. There we go. Incisal edges showing through. Now, I know some old-timer ExoCAD person is thinking, oh, why are you doing all this crap? I could just eyeball it. Well, you won't get as good a result. I'll just about guarantee you. Um, some of these aids, there's just no substitute for having those there as a reference. Um, you're going to end up with a lot more asymmetries and 
screwy occlusion and it, it just forces you to see a lot of the detail that you might otherwise miss so that's my story and I'm sticking to it uh, but I, I really do think that so I'm looking at my papillometer how far anterior of, ins of the uh, papillae are we let's hide that sphere of Monson real quick so remember this is our zero because we put it in the middle of the papilla one two three no I'm sorry one two three four five six and I think I'd like to bring this out a little more to about the seven to eight mark okay one two three four five six seven eight that's I think where I want to put it maybe seven and a half ish I mean we're splitting hairs at this point but um, okay so we've got we've got our centrals positioned I still want to make sure that I'm on the uh, the little sphere of Monson with my centrals which I am I could even bring them up just a hair and I'm right dead through the middle of my midline so centrals really through canines are, are done I'm locking them although I take that back one thing I might do is bring my canines down here just like I did on the other side you see I had just a hair of these cusp tips exposing through that sphere I'm going to do the same thing on this side right there and they can stand to come out a little bit as well get those a bit more centered over the ridge And when I'm designing these, I'm, I'm all about being able to see my symmetry. To me, that is everything. Okay, so I'm liking now where that is. Um, again, looking at our golden proportions, we're still canine tip right through that one. So we're well on our way to having a really nice setup. Um, at this point, I'm going to lock the back of my disc. And now... I'd like to bring this uh, arch down a little bit. Ooh, do you see that? See how my cusp tips are all just starting to poke through? Because that sphere of Monson, if I remember correctly, is referencing the, uh, the buckle cusp, I believe it is. So having all of your cusps be symmetric and just shining through that right there should develop you a nice curve of speed and curve of Monson or a curve of Wilson all right yeah I like it uh, I don't need the papillometer anymore let's uh, turn this up and look at the symmetry I've achieved here already I mean I've got almost the exact amount of teeth shining through on each side so you talk about an aesthetic denture I mean if if symmetry is what adds beauty then that gun this is gonna be a heck of a good-looking guy because this is as symmetric as it gets okay he's got the perfect ideal average width central really I think I would call it quits on this one now the one thing I don't know is on my lower I might have to scale those posterior teeth some uh, relative to the uh, the uppers so let's see where would would this go I don't even need this sphere anymore or really any of these visualization meshes because everything on that is determined off of the maxilla so I'm going to unlock my discs and, and move this all uh, together so what I'm going to do is just align this to the midline of 
the maxilla. And I'm going to just tuck them back behind here a little bit and give it, it is a denture case, so I don't want a huge amount of overlap, but that looks pretty good. And now, I'm looking at proportions. So I really kind of like the proportions of the anterior teeth. I'm gonna lock my disc here and Pull back just a little bit on this. There, let's give them a bit more overjet. So that that's looking great to me, at least from canine to canine. So I'm going to lock it at the canines. And then I've got to look at my scaling here. So mesial buckle cusp in the buckle groove. That's not bad. This might be a little overscaled on upper and lower. So I think what I'm going to do is, is scale down both a little bit. Yeah, so I'm going to pull that in. That looks like about the right position for that second molar, which means I need to bring this in as well. Okay, still looks like we got pretty nice symmetry. So something else I find in digital design is it's really easy to, um, to not pay attention to things like being centered over the ridge with your lower teeth. Okay, so let's hide the maxillary arch for a second. And looking at this, in fact, I do see that my tooth chain, oops, I wish that upper one would go away too. My second molar especially is not exactly centered over the ridge. So if I drew a line from this retromolar pad up to the canine, right, I want my teeth to more or less fall on that line. Um, second molar is where I would like it. I'm going to pull these teeth in just a little bit. And that looks good. And then once again, I'll repeat that over here, getting centered over the ridge. Okay, so I'm not as worried in the posterior about the symmetry. Um, so I'm going to turn back on all my upper teeth, and I'm going to pull them out to the point where they're centered over that. I find it easiest if I make the upper transparent just a little bit because what I'm trying to do is put the lingual or uh, yeah the lingual functional cusps right in the occlusal groove of that and there we go that's starting to look nice remember that we have not introduced that curve of speed uh, into the lower. So doing that little change, looks like that took care of a lot of it. Let's look over here. So these maxillary posteriors need to come out a little bit. All right, lingual cusp right over the central groove. I need to Bring it down just a little bit. All right, there's my buckle groove. Getting the class one relationship. All right, so again, I know there's a dozen ways that you can do this, and I'm being ultra nitpicky here because this is a tutorial, but uh, the lowers are pretty darn close. All right, I want to verify that I didn't screw up my symmetry from my planes. So I'm going to hide the jaw for a second and look at this. And it does appear that I got a little bit off. So I'm actually going to bring second molar up just a little bit. 
to do better with the sphere. Canine tip looks good. That looks pretty good. I want to fix the angulation of that root tip. Just poking through. Okay. Let's now do the same on the other side. So this second molar is looking pretty decent. Same thing over here as far as fixing that root cant. Okay, I've got my symmetry back. I'm really nitpicking now, but I'm going to put this canine up about three microns. Okay, I'm going to quit screwing with it. Uh, that looks good, and now my lowers again need to come back to that so again I don't I don't need this anymore I'm just going to do this referencing upper teeth now so at this stage I find it useful just to uh, move teeth individually this one for example needs to be kicked lingually let's just lock all our maxillary teeth because we have them where we want them Something else, you know, most people don't spend nearly this much time in this initial tooth placement phase and would just do all this with fine tuning in the, uh, in the next stage where you've, you know, you can use the anatomic tools and everything, but, you know, that's not going to correct overall tooth placement, really. And so I find it's a lot more useful to do it at this stage. We'll introduce a little tilt to that. Okay, I don't mind yellow occlusion. That I will take care of in the next phase. All right, this one's looking pretty good. I'm gonna just bring it up ever so slightly. Right there. This one, I already like that one. This one I'm gonna bring up some. I actually prefer on a denture setup to leave a little bit of daylight in the anteriors. Maybe a slight contact on the canine, but um, which I've already got actually. So that's great. Now let's look over here. This tooth is going to need to come out. Okay and it's going to need to come down slightly. Okay, so you can see from kind of the colors of my occlusion that we're pretty darn close on everything now. Um, so I just want to turn my models back on and look and see if I, if I like this setup. And that's, that's really looking pretty good to me. Okay, I like it. We'll go to the next stage. All right, I'm going to do this first because I always seem to forget it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the necks of the teeth back over the ridge. So we'll lock the equators. And I'm just going to pull all these back. I, I find if you don't do this, your gingival proposals are going to have these huge, uh, you know, root eminences on them that, you know, you really don't want there. Canine, I won't do too much because I like to leave a little bit of a canine eminence. But these posteriors, I definitely want to bring on back a good ways. That should be good on the lower. Let's switch over to the, I'm sorry, the upper. So now we'll switch to the lower. And this case has got a really skinny anterior ridge. So I probably need to really try to get it dead over the center with them. And 
Actually, that one can go out a little bit. All right, that looks like a winner. And now I'm going to start adjusting occlusion. And so I'll do this with the cusp tip tool. So I typically will make the lower, the flatter plane. So I'm going to bring that cusp down. And I'm trying to get it all blue green. All right, we're starting to get somewhere now. Um, just trying to run through my mental checklist of anything else I ought to do. Um, let's turn on both jaws and both sets of teeth and really look them over well. See if there's anything else we would want to do. Like for example, extend that tooth up into that space a little bit. And then I may knock off a little bit of the height on these cusp tips just to get them down into a light blue. So don't forget, you, you've not only got the ability to move cusp tips up and down if you view it from this direction, but you can also pull them you know, medial or lateral. And by doing that, you can get off those functional cusps a little bit which can improve your occlusion. And then as a last step, I'm gonna just use the good old remove tool and just manually do a few clicks on any areas of green that I've still got. Okay, I like it. Click next. Okay, so I'm gonna just time lapse all the gingival design so that you can uh, you know, see the, the rest of this. Okay, so here you see the final design. Now, the way I've done this, just using the ExoCAD Crown and Bridge module, this is all going to get turned into just one big monolithic denture. Um, you know, they uh, have a denture module, I just don't have it. But with that said, there is a, a relatively easy way that you can just take your setup and instead of using these merged parts, these are great if you don't mind a monolithic denture. But if you would prefer, you can also turn this into a two-piece denture pretty easily. Okay, so you've got your gingival design, you've got your teeth. Um, you know, you could do just a straight up Boolean subtraction, but you know, you're going to have a lot of path of draw issues. And so I don't have the time in this video to show it. But basically, if you just indicate a path of draw over, say, the tops of your maxillary teeth, and then subtract that from your gingival base. Now you have a digital denture. You would want to create a little bit of an offset spacer for um, fitting. But aside from that, that's, that's how I would take this and turn it into a two-piece uh, digital denture that I could print, mill, whatever. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the final design. Let's uh, look at it relative to all of our design tools. Once again, we were uh, about seven and a half millimeters anterior of the center of the papilla, right? We were, um, I think it was eight millimeters below the papilla. We can look at our golden proportions ruler and see that we are perfectly lined up. We've got exactly nine millimeter wide central incisors, you know, the laterals again, I don't, put as much stock in that, but our canine lines, I, I want the uh, canine line to fall right on the cusp tip, which in most people is, is going to be the visible part of the canine. Um, you'll deviate from that a little bit depending on the way you've got to do the setup. Because I had to get these mandibular teeth centered over the ridge, that means widening out the maxilla. 
uh, unless you put them in cross bites. So again, these are a general guide. They're not an absolute uh, must follow type thing. And then finally, the uh, if we look at the curve of Spee, curve of Wilson, you remember that the uh, the teeth were all set to sit on that curve of, or uh, spear of Monson. So you can see we've got roughly the same amount of cuss tips poking through on all of those and that has developed this nice curvature to the arch uh, and you know pleasing looking aesthetic looking from this direction. So uh, hopefully that was helpful you know both from knowing how to design dentures in ExoCAD uh, but also how to use these tools in the virtual articulator. Uh, my intention, as soon as I get these put up for sale, is you can buy the articulator uh, and just use that. And then I'll have the design tools as a separate purchase so that if someone's not wanting the whole shebang, they just want the design tools, they can do that as well. Uh, so there's other tools in that, but uh, these are just a couple of them that I probably use most frequently. So I hope you found that helpful. Thanks.